Oh, welcome to the last uh, class for Python. Um, hope uh, I have put down the uh, presentation as well as the files that uh, Preeti have sent. So they are all on the web um, under lectures. Go ahead, Preeti. Uh, good evening. Uh, so hope you are all doing good. This is the last class of Python. Uh, let's see. Uh, what we can do and you know we haven't discussed much of the assignments uh, for the last two weeks uh, I have already provided solutions as well uh, uh, last week's last week's class I mean last class solution have been provided along with this class and this class I'm giving some of the projects uh, so I would expect everybody to do the everybody to do the uh, and you can uh, to me you can give me your mail the code and I can come back saying that uh, what, what is the mistake that you have done or you can always reach me out asking me the questions on how to proceed further uh, but please ensure that you do at least I, I just get four projects I expect two of them to be covered by everybody so the agenda of the classes were, uh, of this class would be classes. Let's start over where we have stopped for the last class, and then it would be file handling, exceptional handling. So today's class we might end soon. Uh, so uh, classes and inheritance. Uh, inheritance we all we already know what inheritance is. Uh, it is about uh, using or inheriting the properties of the base class into the derived class. So this is the Python inheritance syntax. You know, this is a class and the, this is the syntax that which we follow. Base class and you will have body of the base class. And there is another class, derived class, which is again the body, body of the derived class. So let me show you one of the examples. So if you see, there is a class called bird. Bird is the base class. Okay, I'm defining uh, a, a special constructor for it, which is a default constructor for the class, and I'm defining two more instances, instance, instance methods. Uh, define who is this and uh, define swim. Okay, I'm creating an another child class called penguin. Okay, which is which is the child class and which will inherit from the base class called bird okay, and I'm creating again a default constructor I'm defining a default constructor here and this is how I inherit from my base class super dot initialization you are initializing your you're calling your super class here okay and then I'm calling a couple of methods I hope uh, my PyCharm screen is visible to you So if I run that, uh, so this would be the output. It says initially first bird, uh, we are initializing the super class. So this would be printed, bird is ready, right? And then followed by penguin is ready and followed by the, who is this? The bird, this method, the bird name is penguin and it runs faster. And again, it is calling dot swim, piggy dot swim. So since swim method is not here, it is not defined here in the in the derived class. It goes to the base class and gets its properties. So it says swim pass, swim faster. Okay, this is how the function is being called. First penguin. So this class penguin is being called. Once this class is called, the super this these methods are being invoked super dot initialize it invokes the base class and then there is this who is this peggy dot who is this and it goes to this print penguin and uh, peggy dot swim it goes to this method and it's print swim faster and then run which is run faster So this is this is the inheritance one of the examples okay 
and there is also a concept of multiple inheritance and this we have already seen in our other programming languages as well so in multiple inheritance the features of all base classes would be inherited by the derived class so there will be two base classes or a number of base classes base 1 and base 2 and the features of these base classes will be inherited to this derived class okay and uh, let's see one of the examples uh, this is very a simple simple example okay so if you see there is a class 1 okay class 1 and class 2 uh, these are these are the base classes and class 3 and class 4 uh, uh, class 1 class 2 class 3 are the base classes and class 4 i just created just to inherit the properties of class 1 class 2 and class 3 so class 4 is a derived class okay now let's see how it executes so i'm just calling the object of class 4 so the class 4 is again a derived class from class 2 and class 3 okay class 2 there is nothing i just created the template of class 2 and class 3 there is a definition uh, there is a there is a function defined against it okay and i'm just inside the function i'm just uh, printing some statement called in class 3 okay this is one of the examples of multiple inheritance So there is this uh, concept called encapsulation as I was mentioning uh, in my earlier class. Uh, it is hiding the private details of the class uh, from the other objects. Now if we see the example like this, there is a class called computer, okay? And there I defined a method, uh, initialized a method, and in that I, I, I initialized a private variable. So when I give double underscores like this, it treats itself as a private variable. You cannot you cannot modify this until and unless you give a setter function to it. Okay. And now I created an another method called cell, and I am just printing the selling price, which is which is the private variable I created here. Okay. And I also defined a setter function. Okay. Setter function is if at all I wanted to change that explicitly, so I can do it by using a setter function. Now I'm I'm calling the class computer and I'm also calling the method c dot sell. Okay. When I call this, so it gives me this statement: selling price is 900. Okay. I'm trying to change the price without without using my setter function. Okay. I'm just uh, changing it c dot max price is equal to 1000. Okay. And I'm trying to re-invoke the method c dot sell. But if you have noticed, selling price is still 900 because there is a private variable this is a private variable and you cannot explicitly convert like this like you cannot you cannot assign reassign the value from 900 to 1000 okay and this is this is but this can be modified by using a setter function set max price of 1000 so once you do this so then the selling price is being changed to 1000 so this is one of the examples of encapsulation now let's see the polymorphism. Polymorphism, as you all know, it is the ability to use a common interface for multiple forms. Okay. Now I defined a class called parrot. Okay. And I also defined a class called penguin. Okay. And in each of the classes, I defined methods called fly and swim. Okay. Fly is a method and swim is a method in each of the classes respectively. Okay. Now I defined a common interface. Okay. The common interface is about to test if the bird, if the if if the bird that which is which we are assigning to, if that bird can fly or not. Okay, this is the common interface I'm using. So now if I instantiate the objects, like I'm I'm creating a variable blue, okay, blu is the name of the parrot, okay, and I'm calling calling the parrot class, and Peggy, it is the name of the penguin, and I'm calling penguin class here so I'm trying to pass the objects you know I'm passing the objects for this common interface for this defined common interface function so if you see flying underscore test and blue I'm calling this 
this object created this created object here and flying underscore test the created object Peggy okay so if I if I run this program so when you when you when you uh, call this common interface flying test and and in in for this particular uh, function if you pass this as a variable blue so it is going to this method to this method in this particular class so define fly okay so when you run this program it says parrot can fly so because it is going here it is calling this particular method so in a way it is saying instead of bird dot fly when you when you call something like this it is like parrot dot fly so parrot dot fly it goes to this method uh, this this method in this class and it says parrot can fly okay similarly when you say flying underscore test it is similar to that of penguin dot fly so it says penguin cannot fly so this is one of the examples of polymorphism you know defining uh, reusing uh, the same common interface or different methods uh, same method with different data types or multiple forms so now let's come to the concept of file handling okay file handling what are files now files are like you can permanently store your data at a particular location on your hard disk so those are called files those are like a placeholder so it can be a text file it can be a csv file it can be anything so those are called as files so in python when you're talking about a file or how do you access a file what all operations uh, are we looking at so we look at opening a file reading a file closing a file appending to an existing file and then and eventually we close the file which means that we close the file in the sense we save the file and close it so these are certain file modes okay so the modes are like read mode write mode uh, there is an exclusive creation which is called XR exclusive R and A is appending and T by default it opens in text for a text mode okay and B is a binary mode and plus you open a file for up, updating you know like an appending mode like an updating reading and writing or you just write open it for an appending mode so now let's first concentrate on what uh, let's try and uh, do for different uh, modes of files uh, let's start with text files initially okay so this is how you go about creating a file or opening a file reading a file appending a file and writing a file okay now this is how we open a file with open of greet.txt there is a file this is this is under w mode which means that i'm writing a file okay so with open of this file name comma the mode that you wanted to follow and as f f is a file handler that you are creating so this is a file handler we say it to be an f, f to be a file handler you can you can give any variable name you want this can be changed okay i said f you can say probably x y z whatever name you want this is a file handler and once you open using this command f dot write so for the uh, for the creator file handler you are mentioning what operation to be done so f dot write and I'm saying hello world okay now I already created a file and I've written something to it now I just wanted to append something on top of it okay so with open again the same greet dot text and I gave the mode to be a okay and I create a file handler to it okay so again still I wanted to write something on top of that I wanted to append something on, the, on top of that so f dot write off I want her to start it in a new line, okay, backslash n, and have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Now I wanted to read from the created file. So what we do is with open read.txt, you are not giving any mode here. By default, if you do not mention anything like w, a, or b, or p, by default it, it takes it to be a read mode. So with open of read.txt, as f i create a file handle and then i'm creating a, a variable to it you know 
so that I can print that variable. So message equal to f dot read and I'm printing the message. So the output would be hello world and have a nice day. Any questions here? So this is how we create text files, uh, create, write, and you know, append, read text files. Okay. Now let's see how do we go about doing for CSV files. So CSV files are nothing but, uh, you know, comma separated text files. You know, I have a, I I wanted, I have a text file that which are comma separated, but I wanted to look it in a tabular form. So then we go up with a CSV file. That is when we come up with CSV files. Okay. But for to access CSV files, we have certain libraries that which are by default coming with your Python installation. So, so for example, So there are certain libraries called import CSV. Okay, if you have already installed uh, Python 3.6 or any version above 3, so you will have your uh, CSV installation, CSV uh, library along with it. Like there is, there it is not needed, it is not needed to explicitly do a installation for CSV library. Okay, and if I, uh, uh, if I wanted to use rest all libraries, like if I wanted to use pandas or or if I wanted to install other necessary libraries, then there is a method of doing it in PyCharm. Um, I'll show that when I'm uh, when I'll be explaining you with pandas. So this CSV library it provides the functionality to both again read, write, append uh, to do all sort of operations on CSV files, like what we have done in our text file. Okay, so I'll show you one of the examples here. I'll just have an example here so I can show you. Now, if you see this example, uh, okay, I initially imported a CSV here, okay, and similar to that of the text file, uh, have we opened uh, a text file? It is the same thing with open. There is already a competitions.csv uh, in my directory, okay. Uh, I'm creating a file handle here, and I'm reading the contents of file. So there is a CSV dot reader. Okay, to read the file, csv.reader, and reading the file handle, and I'm storing that to contents of the file. Okay, now you might want to ignore these things. Uh, okay, I just, I'm just uh, doing this porter underscore competitions. I'm creating a list item. Okay, and to that list item, I'm trying to append each line, whatever is being there in my competitions.csv. I'm trying to append each line into that list item and ultimately I'm printing that okay if you see this so my competitions.csv has got this much of information okay so it has appended everything whatever including the header year event and winner is the header and followed by these three these three uh, uh, these three elements to be these three elements to be the first row followed by the next day similarly going on like that you know the next three elements the next three elements are uh, the next row and followed by these three elements to be the next row okay now if you want to see uh, CSV explicitly let me just share that also I guess you are not able to see the CSV at this, right? Okay. 
Okay, this is my CSV that which I'm accessing competitions dot CSV and uh, when I when I'm importing when I'm when I'm writing it into a list item like this this is this is how it is being created every every row is being appended to this particular list item okay and now when I wanted to pick up information okay I wanted to pick up an information from this so I'm again opening the file uh, opening the file here okay and I wanted to read each and every same thing what we have done it earlier I am creating a list and for each line I am appending the each line into the list okay and I am trying to print the fourth indexed value fourth indexed value is 0 1 2 3 4 so this is my fourth indexed value okay when I say print of four of competitions of four it is giving best kept long okay and there is an another way of doing it like I can also say that picking information in terms of index number given like you know I can give the name of the competition okay I can give the name of the competition if you see the Excel the Excel is in terms of what event or competition that which is going uh, that which is being held and there is a winner to that particular competition okay now I might, I might want to say I have I want to look at World Cup Okay, here I'm giving World Cup. So it says the winner was Burkina Faso. So this is the winner. So I can access in those terms as well. You know, I can I can give the name of the competition. So what am I doing here is that I'm taking a target variable and uh, taking the value of the input. The target the target variable will have the user's input. Okay, and I'm trying to get the index number of that particular target. Okay, by doing this porter underscore competitions. We all know that porter underscore competition is already a list item that has been created initially. Okay, and dot index is an inbuilt function that which gets the index item of that list. Okay, and after that list item is there. We, so since it is already been known that uh, once a competition name is given, the next immediate uh, column would be the winner. So what am I doing is that to get and index plus one and when I'm printing it here okay and now how do I load the information there is something called whatever dot CSV I've already created uh, that I'm supposed to be creating as part of this code okay and I'm create I'm writing a new uh, CSV file so I'm writing a write mode here okay uh, so I'm creating again a file handler okay and I'm, I'm letting the system know that my delimiter is comma okay, and, I'm, and I'm writing a data handler dot write row so when I say dot write row it this thing goes to one row followed by this followed by this okay individually it goes on it goes on creating with uh, individual rows like the next row the next row it keeps on iterating so now let's see I wanted to write it into competitions.csv okay so before I write into competitions.csv I wanted to close it otherwise it says permissions denied okay so I'm opening a competitions.csv file and I'm trying to write it in an append mode okay and I'm starting it from a new line okay and now again I send a data handler to it I'm mentioning what type of delimiter am I giving same thing as we did as writer okay and I'm writing data handler dot the same thing like I write a new rows to it okay now if I execute this okay let's check our competitions.csv you know if you see these three rows have been appended to it okay 2006 2011 2012 these three rows have been appended okay so this is how we do it for CSV 
Okay. Any questions? Now, as I was mentioning earlier, like we can uh, install libraries uh, with PyCharm or with Python. Okay, CSV is not the only library that which we can by which we can handle CSV files. There is another library called Pandas. Okay, Pandas is an open source Python library, and it provides very high performance. Like when you are using your data analytics tool, or you wanted to read uh, your Excel sheet, there is a huge data, and you wanted to uh, read, write, or append, and do any every other operations to it. Pandas is one is a very uh, useful tool for such purposes. So it is very high performance. Uh, it 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 works with very uh, huge data and it is high in performance as well. So Pandas Pandas is available with all sort of Python installations. Okay, you can just say you can just use this code. You know, import Pandas, create a, create an item to it, uh, uh, create a data frame. We say it to be a data frame. Okay. DF is said to be a data frame. Uh, so when you import a pandas, you are you are importing a library. So once you import a library, you will have to create an object to it. Without creating an object, you cannot access that library. Okay. So instead, I can say import pandas pd and df equal to pd dot whatever read csv or read excel anything we can do using Python using pandas. And when you say print df, when you print that data frame. So it just prints whatever has been existing in your uh, in your CSV file. So we can see that as an example. So before that, let me just explain you uh, how do you do in your pie chart. Okay. So when you go to your pie chart, uh, there'll be something called settings. So you'll have to go to. By the way, I gave the link also in the class notes. Uh, how do you install an external library in pie chart? Uh, so if you uh, if you go to that, uh, if you go to uh, the presentation and look at the class notes, there will be the link wherein you can follow the other py other Python library installations as well. Okay, I went to file and I go. I I am going to settings here. Okay, in settings there are there is something called project interpreter. Okay, in the project interpreter, uh, my my Anaconda installation is in this directory. Okay. Since I already have my Python installations, all my Panda installations and restaurant library installations here, I was just changing it to my Python, uh, my Anaconda library here. Okay. Now, if you see, I can search here like for Pandas. So Pandas has already been installed here in my system. If you see, there is a Panda installation already here. Okay. So it is only that you add it here. It is taking time, and I can say I I wanted to find like if there is pandas or not. Okay, there is already a pipe uh, panda installation here. Okay, if I again say install package, it might say saying that it has already been installed and it is updating. So it is still installing. So this is how you go and install uh, uh, install uh, all other install required packages for your project. It is taking time. Uh, let's give it. Some 30 seconds more. If it is not doing, I'm just closing it. Yep. So if you see, pandas has installed successfully. Okay. So it would be saying it like this. If you don't, if you wanted to install pandas, go to settings, go to your project interpreter. Okay. And then here, go and add something you wanted to add. You can say it would show up whatever libraries you have. Okay. And you can give the uh, library name. Say for example, NLTK. Okay, I already have NLTK also in my system. Okay, so if you wanted to install, you can click on install packages and do it. So this is how you do it. Okay, now let's see. Um, uh, 
Uh, let me just open one of the files and I'll show you. Okay, now let's see. I'm just trying to import pandas. Okay, and I'm creating a data frame equal to pandas dot read CSV of my competitions dot CSV. Okay, and I'm printing my data frame. So if you have seen it is it prints us in the tabular form. You know, year, event, winner. Okay, this is how it is printing us. So there is no cumbersome loops going on, for loop or anything. Just to read the file, you can just do it like this. Okay, this is this is one of the ways of handling pandas, you know, handling CSV files using Python libraries. So there is uh, uh, another file called JSON. So you must have all heard about it. JSON is a JavaScript object notation, okay, and it is a most popular uh, format when you are using in terms of your app creations or you know when you are trying to fetch your API data into your system. So what not? All these forms are using uh, they they tend to uh, give us in form of JSON. And from JSON, we interpret the result and do our processing. Like, say for example, I'm accessing an external API. Okay, my API, I'm accessing a Google Map data. Okay, when I'm accessing a Google Map data, uh, I wanted a location. I have a location, and I wanted to have a distance between a, uh, a two locations. Okay, so how I get the uh, uh, the input when I'm looking for the API data? The input I get in terms of uh, source destination, uh, source source location, destination location, and distance in kilometers. So everything will be in terms of JSON. JSON is again, if you we have already seen our uh, dictionary, right? We have seen our data dictionaries, right? So in the same in the same method, like there will be a key and value, key and a value. So that is said to be a JSON format. Okay. Now let's see an example of uh, JSON. So for JSON also we just try and import import JSON. Okay, we import a library called JSON, and uh, similarly we open. Uh, we have a file called person.json, okay? We open that person.json and we have a uh, file handler to it, assigned to it. And uh, this is the data. I am loading, loading the JSON into a variable data, okay? Now if you just run the file handling, okay? Now there is a date, uh, if you see this, the output, the read data from JSON file would be name languages okay now there is also a method of converting a dictionary an existing dictionary to a json format okay i have a dictionary called person underscore dictionary and name is bob age is 12 and there is children none okay and this is how i convert my my dictionary into a json just this command json dot dumps so which means that you are dumping that dictionary into a JSON file and you are assigning that to a variable. Okay, so this is the output of that, converting dictionary into a JSON. So what was it? Name Bob, age 12 and children null. Okay, now if you want to write a JSON to a file, okay. Now there is again a person called dictionary a person dictionary, name Bob, and the languages, I just created a list, English and French, and married is true, and age is 32, okay? So again, I open that file under write mode. I'm opening a text file under write mode, okay? And I'm dumping this variable, person underscore dictionary, to that JSON file, 
file handler. Okay. And uh, this is how this is one of one of the methods that which we use. Uh, if you wanted to make it in a pretty way or uh, like you wanted to have some spacing to it or indentation to it. So this is there. there is a string I created which is again a dictionary name languages and number numbers 2.2 1.6 .2, and null okay. And I'm loading I'm loading into this that string has been loaded into this particular variable and I'm trying to print it in a pretty format. How do I do? JSON dot dumps. I'm dumping that created variable. And um, there is an indentation which is four. Four spaces. Okay. Four spaces to it. For everything there is a four spaces to it. Okay. And I'm sorting the keys. I'm sorting in an order. If you see languages, name, number. Okay, I'm sorting the keys. Keys are being sorted. Okay, so this is how we create JSON. Write, reading, writing, appending, and dumping. Converting by converting a dictionary into uh, JSON. Okay, now you already know. Uh, next, uh, there is a concept called exceptional handling in our programming languages. You know catch and throw exception right so catch and catch throw exception these are these are the usual terms that which we use in most of the programming languages right so in python there are again built in exceptions and user defined uh, exceptions okay so why do we go for an exception and handling uh, you are you are doing you are writing your code of program okay and there'll be many unforeseen issues Say when you are writing the most frequent uh, in real time scenario when you when you are doing coding in your real time scenarios uh, with Python generally you are trying to read a CSV file or you are trying to read an Excel file. Okay, when you are trying to read an Excel file, uh, there might be some UTF-8 characters or there might be there might be some uh, unsupported characters that which are not possible to be read. Okay. The system just fails. The system just comes out of the system, uh, the program, and uh, it, it just we we are we have no clue on what to do. Okay, it might be because of one single row in an entire Excel file that which consists of some one lakh records. Okay, so we are stuck. We we will have no idea of what was going on, and we don't even know how to capture that error. Okay, so for such scenarios, there is something called uh, exceptional handling in Python and how we do that is that we have a try and an accept block okay exceptional handling is again across we can use it either in while we are handling files or or we can do it when we are uh, when we just do a mathematical calculations like you know divide by zero error or most common most common error like there will be a user defined method error and you might want to catch it so exceptional handling, it's, it's a safer way of using it. You would know where exactly the error is and, and, and the error would be predefined. So this is one of the ways of handling exceptions. Okay. I have a random list A02. Okay. And I'm iterating through the loop. I'm iterating through this list item. I wanted to divide it. Divide each item by itself uh, or by the next element. Okay. So I would say the entry is this and I'm trying to divide one by whatever the entry and I'm breaking it okay under these scenarios uh, with this random list I can say that I already have two errors one of them uh, this is not an integer okay this is a string though I am converting it int into something this will not be accepted because it is not a uh, compatible type this the, this doesn't consider it to be an integer okay now same thing, 1 by 0, this is 0 division error, divide by 0 error, okay. So 2, 1 by 2, yes it is possible, right. So let's see uh, the output. So when I just run this program, this would be the output generated, okay. The entry is A, so there is a value error, 
when you say value error this is not a compatible string okay and they again the entry is zero for zero at the entry you have an error called zero division error okay which is divided by zero error one by zero is not possible and the entry is two and the reciprocal of t u two is zero point five so this is one of the uh, ways of handling exceptions now if you see the same thing if you if if you wanted to see uh, in terms of file okay this is a very simple example uh, so i'm trying to open a file let's say i've just run the program so i'm taking an input input from user saying what file to open okay and i'm creating an exception block except okay this is file not found error okay so let me just do okay i'm just saying a b c dot text so it says it goes to the exception block and it says a b c dot text not found Okay. Similarly, if I say, okay, there is a grid dot text, and so it is reading the file. Hello world, and have a nice day. Okay. so this is how we do for files file file have error handling for files so these are the projects uh, okay so one of the projects is you generate a uh, program that we generates a random password okay and there are a couple of rules assigned to it like it should be a mix of upper case lower case okay and uh, you can just ask for a few words like name action and then customize a story you know make up a story out of those lines okay and there is something called email email slicer given an email i wanted you to give the username domain name and the email address okay and a program to reverse the contents of the file and you store it in another file so this would be some some of the inter, uh, interesting projects so any questions yeah i think this uh, project can be a good way of seeing how many of you have uh, uh, understood what we uh, preeti has been saying and maybe it's a, on most yeah, importantly it will be it will be a something that you guys can uh, practice on that that's the most important aspect so uh, yeah more some of you have sent me the assignments of 1 2 and 3 uh, uh heba uh, have did you did you happen to see the mail that i sent across or you want me to explain uh, lambda function again or are you clear we can hear you heba hello heba you might want to type it in the chat i'm fine with that so are you uh, did you understand the concept of lambda or the anonymous functions or you want me to repeat it i can do that now anybody uh, please let me know if you wanted me to repeat the concepts or anything uh, i can do that or she said little bit uh huh so you want me to explain it or Okay. Lambda function uh, it is nothing but it is just nothing but a function, okay? Now when I say that I'm creating a uh, variable triple, okay? My concept of 
my con now i'll come up with a function called uh, triple and my my assumption is that given a number okay i want to have a triple of that value right you can create this in two ways okay i'm just defining number n okay and i would say uh new number or nn equal to n into 3 and return nn okay print number of 9 this is one way of creating it i'm i'm creating a generic general normal function of a we do right so now if you see the output is 27 okay 93 is 27 now i am saying the anonymous function what it does is that i don't want to create these three steps here because it is just a very simple operation i'm doing i just am what i'm trying to achieve is that n into 3 okay but i still wanted to use it in terms of function okay so for that what i'm trying to do is that i'll create a function called i'll create a variable called triple okay and i'm using a keyword called lambda x of lambda x this is the syntax okay so which means that x like 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 number of like when i when i've given the earlier earlier thing like number of n right so like i have created number of n n being the input parameter that it is taking right similarly triple is also uh, like lambda is also lambda of x so x is a argument that which you are taking okay x into 3 okay instead of giving number of 3 i would just say triple of 9 it is still giving me 27 understood am i clear now okay um so any more questions so pl please work on this projects okay um not a problem if you are not able to do it i would suggest i would uh, i guess a lambda cannot be possible or and uh, and I'm, I'm, i'm yet to look at that lambda when i'm trying to explain even i was having the same doubt so if i say x into y x into y and if i can say 9 comma 4 let me just check this yes two parameters are possible in lambda yes you can do uh, in terms of two parameters i had also used anaconda so which is which it more better by charm on uh isma uh, that is up to you pycharm is again anaconda and pycharm both are similar like it is it is a tool in both the ways it is a tool okay anaconda if you have also downloaded the editor like this then yes anaconda if you are comfortable using anaconda go ahead and use it so otherwise pycharm is also fine even i am using both i use anaconda and pycharm before start before taking up these classes i was using anaconda myself i found anaconda to be more uh, user friendly or i am used to Py anaconda than pycharm so it is again personal choice you can use anyways so the difference here is that uh, if you are trying to use python in terms of um uh, python in terms of web apps okay you are trying to access uh, if, if you are trying to program or code in terms of web apps creating web applications using python then i would suggest uh, using pycharm because pycharm again it uh, there is a repository it is a code repository and uh, when you are using web web applications like each and every file will be linked to each other right so in that term pycharm in those terms pycharm is very useful i would suggest pycharm 
uh, so when you are using your coding like your normal coding python coding or creating any like the project programs that which i gave which i gave you right now that that is just a single script uh, creation so you need not have dependencies with multiple uh, scripts and you can go ahead and use anaconda so it depends on what you are using how you are using python So, any more questions? So, if there are no questions, as you all know, I am always reachable through mail. I'll I'll reply back, or if you want, we can also have an another session. Come up with questions. I can have an another session with you. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Preeti. Thank you. It's been a very uh, learning experience for me also uh, and uh, I hope we have the people on the other side should have learned something uh, you know next month uh, next week we'll going to start the fasting season my Ramadan so I know you guys will be busy and uh, after that uh, hopefully the university will start uh, I'm not even sure yet on our side but uh, uh, I'll be in touch with you guys through email and uh, WhatsApp and see what we can do. Uh, but uh, let me know uh, if you have any other concern. There are a lot of people nowadays who have shown interest to give some presentation on various topics. I'm a little bit reluctant right now. But uh, if you have some more uh, time or uh, if you have some time to, to go through certain aspects of the subjects that you guys are doing at your uh, in, in the university, do let me know, and maybe we can find somebody or some expert in that field and uh, to give you a small presentation. Uh, I know that Dr. Asma has put down certain um, um, software that she was she taught you guys last uh, last last year. Uh, also, I think there is a presentation. Uh, upcoming presentation uh, that uh, Dr. Asma have sent out the message for. So join if you join that one also to see what type of a a application people are doing on uh, AI and machine learning. Um, after that, like uh, the presentation and everything are there on the website. Feel free to download uh, and uh, try to see if you can guys can finish up these projects. Um, again, thank you, Preeti. Thank you for all your thank help. Thank you so and much time. for the opportunity as well, sir. So it was nice. It was a learning experience for me altogether. So even I myself learned many things using Python, you know, with the methods and everything. So thank you so much. It was a learning experience for me as well. All right, guys. Thank you and uh, thank you so you much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.